Hi everybody, this is Crystal. So how's everybody doing today? Hope everybody's doing well and staying safe. Today I'm going to show you how to make a hat here. Do a little story about this hat here. So this hat that I'm wearing on my head, okay, maybe many of you have seen this because many of you have, have asked me, um, this hat right here, this was a gift. I wear it in many videos to me from my friend Gary. Um, he has a YouTube channel and it's called Urban Yarns. Um, I'll put a link to it down below. Um, he sent this to me and it's actually a knitted hat. He has a pattern for this, a free pattern. Um, and you can find that on his YouTube channel if you knit. I don't know how to knit, but I had a lot of people ask me if I could do it something similar in crochet. So I asked Gary and he said that would be just fine. So this is called his Bush Tracker Beanie. I, like I said, it's knitted and I don't knit, knit and he sent this to me. So if you are a knitter and you've never seen this before, go check out Gary and check out his free pattern for this. And if you haven't seen Gary at all before, go check him out and give him a subscribe. I think you're really going to love him. He's one of my favorite uh, YouTubers. So um, I went ahead and tried to make a crochet version. Now you must remember that mine is not going to look like his because crochet obviously is different than knitting but I did try to use um, ribbing and this is I, I'm guessing some sort of herringbone but I used herring, herringbone in mine so I did the best I could I honestly think Gary's looks better than mine but hey I did what I could do so I, I did uh, make it in two two different um, yarns which I'll show you in the video and um, so this is what this is what one of them looks like right here on me. This is done in two different colors, and um, and then I did the, this one is actually my favorite because the yarn is absolutely gorgeous, and I don't even like busy yarns at all. But this one, I love this yarn, and the so you'll see the tutorial will be done me making it in this yarn right here but once i was finished i was like gosh that's pretty but you can't see the herringbone very well nor even the ribbing it's just more the yarn is what you're seeing and that's fine with me because that's a pretty yarn so uh i'll probably wear this one a lot but this is what it looks like in a variegated yarn crocheted up and this is what it looks like and this is two different uh colors now, um, I will note in the video, I said I used this yarn right here. And then at the later, I made this one. The, there is one difference between the two on this one. When you switch colors, only you, if you decide to switch colors, if you're doing one with two different colors, only use the other color on the herringbone stitch only. That's the only time I use that light color. And on this hat, I added one more row of herringbone. And then that's the only difference between the two. Um, and then you can make your ri ri your rim here as long as you want. I like longer uh, hats that go down further. So um, that's that's what it looks like. So uh, I mean, I like both of them. I do because brown's my favorite color. But this one's way prettier. Well, don't mind my hair. I just like this yarn a lot. It's so nice. See, now as you can see, you can't see the stitch work, but the yarn shore is gorgeous. You guys ready? I'm going to go ahead and do it. You can do it. All right. I know you can do it. Let's get started. Okay, here are the hats just a little bit closer. I'll show you so you can see the ribbing on it, the herring bones there. And ribbing at the bottom and like I said you can make this ribbing down here as long as you wanted and as I mentioned when I switched colors I only switched on the herringbone row and when I did this one I added one extra row of herringbone the video you'll see me working with this yarn again I mean you can make it in you know like any any yarn that you uh variegated striped two different colors whatever you want to do and you know it's up to you that's just i'm just showing you how it looks with a uh, busy yarn like this and then a two to, uh, two different colors of yarn so you can do it however you want but that's kind of how it looks i don't know if i did gary's hat any justice but like i said i did my best <laughs> so those should fit, should fit about 21 to 23 which had probably i'm certain 
Okay, so for the variegated, which is at my absolute favorite, I adore that yarn. I used Gazelle Unicorn. It's a hand-dyed uh, yarn, 100% superwash merino. I did buy this at Hobium Yarns, which is based in Turkey. It's so beautiful. And the color, I love the color. And I'm not a busy yarn type of person, but I will wear this hat. It's super gorgeous. Even though... You can't see the stitches that well. I guess it's more of a focus on the yarn, which is <laughs> pretty. <laughs> I love it. So um, you're gonna need, this is about a four weight yarn. So you're gonna need about 200 yards of a four weight yarn to complete this project. You don't have to use this yarn. Any yarn will work. So this is what the one I use for my variegated. And for the solid, again, it's just a four weight yarn. And for that, I used Big Twist. Uh, value yarn which is 100% acrylic um, and I use the color in the middle is called camel that's the light brown and then the dark is just called brown like I said 200 yards will make the hat <clears throat> um, of a four weight yarn so any four weight will work there you can see which one's your favorite I don't know I know that it doesn't particularly look like Gary's but you know, like I said, I hope I did it justice as far as trying to make crochet look, trying to mock a knitted hat. I don't know. It, I did my best. Sorry, Gary. <laughs> I'm going to wear this one. This one a lot though. I like it. Okay. And then for the hook, I used a size for, I used a size H, which is a five millimeter crochet hook. All right. So remember any four weight yarn. And then a five millimeter crochet hook in the video that you're getting ready to see i am doing it in this variegated yarn here and i did this afterwards and the only difference is i added one more row of herringbone to it so i do consider this an intermediate pattern but beginners you're more than welcome to give it a try i always recommend giving it a try i always hope that i teach well enough that even a beginner that knows some basic stitches can do it i think you can do it I, I really do. Okay. First, we're going to go ahead and start off with a slip knot on our hook. And now we are going to start by working a chain of three. There's one, two, and there's three. Now we're going to slip stitch back into that first chain to form a little ring. I always put my middle finger back in through there like that. That way I don't lose track of where my ring is at before I slip stitch. Just like that. So now what I'm going to do is work a chain of three. One, two, three. Now that cha chain of three is going to count as a double crochet here and for the rest of the pattern. So now we're going to work back in to that center of that ring and we're going to work 11 double crochets through that little center of the ring. So we're going to yarn over and go through that ring, draw up a loop, and do a double crochet. And we want to do a total of 11. So counting that chain three there, and our 11 doubles that we're doing through the center of the ring, we'll have a total of 12 double crochets. Okay, so once you made it to the end of round one, you did your 11 double crochets through the ring, and we got your beginning chain three, you want to go ahead and slip stitch into the top of that beginning chain three and you'll have a total of 12 double crochets now counting that chain three and that will end round one and we're going to go ahead and we're going to start round two we're going to start round two by chaining three one two three counts as a double now we're going to go right back into that same stitch right there that we just slip stitched into right there in that little spot same spot this chain three is coming out of and work a double crochet so 
So that was two double crochets into the same stitch. Now I'm gonna work two double crochets into every stitch all the way around. So I'm gonna to go to my next stitch and I'm gonna work two double crochets into the next stitch. So there's one, there's two, and then the next one right there, two doubles. There's one, there's two, and then the next one, two doubles. So I'm going to continue around for round two, working two double crochets in every stitch until I make it back to my starting point. All right, I have made it to the end of round two, and I'm going to go ahead and slip in by slip stitching into the top of my beginning chain three, and we should have a total of 20 four stitches now at the end of round two okay so to start round three we are going to chain three which counts as a double crochet so now we're going to work an increase stitch in the next stitch so right here this is how we're going to do our increase stitch we're going to work a regular double crochet just on top of the next stitch so regular double crochet right on top of it and then around the post of that exact same stitch that we just worked in we're going to work a front post double crochet so here we put the regular double and we're going to go around the post of this one so we're going to yarn over the same stitch just around the post of it and we're going to work a front post double so we go around the post of the stitch like that and then we work a double crochet so there we put two stitches in to one stitch. Now the next stitch we're just going to do a regular double crochet into the top of it. And now the next stitch we're going to do our increase stitch again. So we're going to come over to it and we're put a regular double crochet into the top of it. And then we are going to work a front post double crochet around the post of that exact same stitch down here. Just like that. Okay, we're going to put a regular double crochet into the next stitch. And then the next stitch is going to be an increase stitch again. So we're going to do a regular double crochet into the top of it and then a front post double crochet around the post of the exact same stitch so right down here and this is a pattern we're going to repeat all the way around so regular double crochet into the next stitch and then the next stitch we're going to do an increase so we are going to do a regular double crochet into the top of it and then the same stitch we're going to do a front post double crochet around it just like that one more time regular double crochet into the next stitch And then the next stitch is going to be the increase. So we are going to do a regular double crochet into the top of it. And front post double crochet around the post of the same stitch. So I'm going to repeat this pattern all the way around until I get back to my starting point. All right, I have made it to the end of round three. Now your last stitch that you did should have been an increase stitch where we did the regular double and the front post double into the same stitch. Now we're gonna end by slip stitching into our first, or our beginning chain three there, and you should have a total now of 36 stitches. And now we're gonna continue on to round four. So round four, we are going to do a chain of three. One, two, three, which counts as our first double crochet. And now we are going to do a front post double crochet around the next stitch. 
So we're going to yarn over, go around this next stitch, and do a front post double crochet. That. Now our next stitch will be our increase stitch. So what we're going to do, you can see it right here. You can see it was a post stitch on the previous round. So what we're going to do is go into the top of it and put a double crochet. And then we're going to also put a front post double crochet around the post of it. So just around that post from the previous, previous round. Front post double crochet. Just like that. Okay. Now the next stitch is going to be a regular double crochet. This is going to be the repeat for the rest of the round. Regular double crochet into the next stitch. Front post double crochet around the next stitch. And then the next stitch will be our increase stitch. So right there, we are going to do a double crochet into the top of it. And a front post double crochet around the post of it, which is the front post double crochet from the previous row. And we're going to we're going to repeat that pattern again. So again, we're going to put regular double crochet into the next stitch. Front post double crochet around the next stitch. And then the next stitch is going to be our increase stitch. And you can see it was the post stitch from the previous row. So we're going to do a regular double crochet on top of it and a front post double crochet around the post of it. So I'm going to repeat this pattern all the way around until I get back to my starting point. One more time, I'll show you regular double crochet into the next stitch, front post double crochet into the next. And then the next one is the increase stitch. So if you look at it, you can see that it is the post stitch from the previous round. We do a regular double crochet in the top of it and a front post double crochet around the post of it. So I'll meet back up with you when I get back over here to our starting point. All right, I'm coming to the end of round four and your last stitch should have been an increase stitch and you should have a total of 48 stitches now. We're gonna go ahead and end by slip stitching into the top of our beginning chain three. And we're gonna start round five. So we're gonna do an, some more increases here. So we're gonna start off with a chain of three. One, two, three. Now the next stitch we are going to do a front post double crochet and you can see it was a front post double crochet on the previous round. So we're going to do that again, front post double crochet. And then the next stitch, we're just going to put a double regular double crochet into the top of the next stitch. Now the next stitch is going to be our increase stitch. And if you look, it was a post stitch from the previous round. So we're going to go into it and put a double crochet in the top of it and then around the post of it we're going to do a front post double crochet just like that so that's what we're going to do now for round round five so again we're going to do that again now here's the repeat of the round we're going to do one double crochet into the next stitch front post double crochet into the next and you can see it was a post stitch we're keeping our post stitches lined up on the previous round and then a regular double crochet into the top of the next stitch and then the next stitch we are going to increase and if you look it is a post stitch from the previous row so we're going to go in and we're going to do a double crochet on top of it 
and a front post double crochet around the post of it. And then we're going to repeat the same thing again. So again, we're going to do a regular double crochet into the top of the next stitch. And then we are going to do a front post double crochet into the next. And you can see it was a post on the previous round. We're just keeping our posts lined up. A regular double crochet into the next stitch, right into the top of it. And then the next stitch is our increase. So if you look, you can see it was a post from the previous round. So we're going to do a double crochet on top of it, just regular double crochet. And then we're also going to do our front post double crochet around the post of it. And we're going to repeat this pattern all the way around for round five. I'll show you one more time. Regular double crochet into the next stitch, front post double crochet, the next one. regular double crochet into the next one and then the next one we is our increase stitch it's the post stitch from the previous round so we're going to do a double crochet on top of it and the top of it and a front post double crochet around the post of it so i'm going to keep continue repeating this until i make it all the way back around to my starting point all right, I've made it to the end of round five. You should have a total of 60 stitches now, and you should have ended in an increased stitch. So we're gonna go ahead and end by slip stitching into our beginning chain three, and we're round six, we're gonna do one more round of increases. So we're gonna start off with a chain of three, which counts as our double. Okay. We are going to do a front post double crochet into the next stitch and you can see it was a front post double crochet from the previous round so front post double crochet and then we will do a regular double crochet into the next stitch now the next stitch we're going to do a front post double crochet it was a regular double crochet in the previous row but now we're going to make it a front post double crochet so we're going to go around it and we're going to work a post stitch right around it now the next stitch will be our increase stitch and you can see it was a post stitch like always from the previous row so we're going to go into the top of it and work a regular double crochet and then we're also going to work a front post double crochet around the post of it the same stitch just like that and now we're going to do that again so here's the repeat now for round six we will do a regular double crochet into the next stitch. And then we're going to do a front post double crochet into the next stitch, which was a front post double crochet on the previous round. So we're just keeping our posts lined up. The next stitch, we are going to do a regular double crochet into the top of it. The next stitch we are going to do a front post double crochet now remember it was a regular double crochet on the previous round but now we're going to make it a front we're going to do a front post double crochet on it right around the post of it and now the next stitch is our increase stitch and you can see it is a post stitch as always from the previous row so we're going to do a double crochet in the top of it and a front post double crochet around the post of it. So that's the repeat for round six. One more time I'll show you. Regular double crochet into the top of the next stitch. And then front post double crochet around the next. Regular double crochet into the top of the next stitch. front post double crochet around the next and then our next one is our increase stitch so we need to work a regular double crochet into the top of it 
and a front post double crochet around the post of it of the same stitch just like that so I'm going to continue this pattern all the way around until I get back to my starting point all right I have made it to the end of round six you should have a total of 72 stitches now and you should have ended in an increase there like always our last stitch and we're going to go ahead and slip stitch into the our beginning chain three okay so no more increasing we're done doing that okay now we're going to start uh row seven or round seven we're always going to have 72 stitches now. 72 is our magic number so we're going to start off by chaining three and we're going to work a front post double crochet into the next stitch and it is a front post double from the previous round and now we're going to work a back post double crochet into the next stitch and that's actually a see that regular double that's a regular double crochet from the previous row but we're going to work a back post double around it so we're going to yarn over and go around it from the back around the post like that and then do our double crochet now the next stitch we're going to do a front post double crochet around it was a post stitch from the previous round And then we're going to do a back post double crochet. So it was a double crochet from the previous row, but now we're going to, we're going to do a back post double crochet around it. So we're going to yarn over, go behind your work like this, back through, and then around your posts of the stitch. So the post is on the back of your hook like that. And we're going to go ahead and do our double crochet. And then we're going to do a front post double crochet into the next stitch. And then we're going to do a back post double crochet around the next stitch. So yarn over, go around from the back. Back post is just a little bit trickier than a front post, but once you get the hang of it, you'll be flying right through. Front post double crochet. And then a back post double crochet. Front post double crochet. And a back post double crochet and we're gonna do this front post double crochet back post double crochet repeat all the way around until we get back to our starting point so whenever we see a front post double crochet from the previous row we're gonna do a front post double crochet in it and then the next stitch we'll be, we are gonna do a back post double crochet okay like that and then a front post double and a back post double and I will continue this front post back front post double crochet back post double crochet repeat and I'll meet back up with you at our starting point Right, I have made it back to the end of round seven, 72 stitches still, and you should have ended in a front post double crochet. So I'm gonna go ahead and end by slip stitching into the top of my beginning chain three. And now I'm gonna repeat round seven for round eight. So I'm going to chain three, and I'm gonna do a front post double crochet into the next stitch, and a back post double crochet into the next. And then a front post double crochet and a back post double crochet front post double crochet and a back post double crochet so we're keeping our post lined up that's what we're doing front post double and a back post double so I'm going to keep repeating this front post double crochet, back post double crochet repeat until I get back to my starting point. So 
just like that. All right, when you make it to the end of round eight, you still should have your 72 stitches. You should have ended with a post stitch and you go ahead and slip stitch into your beginning chain three. Now you wanna repeat round eight two more times till you have a total of 10 rounds. And that's starting from round one all the way down. You'll have 10. So repeat round eight, do it again for round nine and round 10. And then I'll meet back up with you. The exact same thing for round nine and 10 is what we just did for, for round eight. 72 stitches at the end of each round. All right, I have made it to the end of round 10. Now we're gonna start round 11. So you shall, you still should have your 72 stitches. Remember, that's our magic number. We're gonna go ahead and end by slip stitching into our top of our beginning chain three. Now we're gonna do a round of, of single crochet. So we're gonna chain one. Now that chain one does not count as anything. We're just gonna pretend like it's not even there. And we're gonna go right back into that same stitch there that we just slip stitched into and do a single crochet. And then we're gonna go to the next stitch and put a single crochet into the top of that one. And then the next one, single crochet into the top. So it's just one single crochet into the top of every single stitch all the way around. This is round 11. We're gonna do this until we get back around to, to our starting point. One single in every stitch. Just like that. All right, I've made it to the end of round 11 and you still should have your 72 stitches. And now we're gonna start round 12. In round 12, we are going to be working in the back loop of every stitch. So when we end round 11, we are going to slip stitch into the back loop of our first single crochet. So we're gonna go ahead and you see how the there's two loops to your stitch. The one closest to you is your front loop and the one furthest away is a back loop. We are going to end round 11 by slip stitching into the back loop only. And now we're gonna start working herringbone stitches. Now the herringbone double crochet is a very easy stitch to do and I'm gonna show you how to do it right now. So we're gonna start off by chaining one. And now that chain one, again, does not count as anything. It's just there, we're gonna pretend like it's not. We're going to be working this round of herringbone stitches in the back loop of every stitch, okay? So we're going to yarn over and we're gonna go into the back loop of this first stitch and draw up a loop like that. Now we're just gonna go directly and pull that loop through that first loop that's on our hook. Like that. So that'll leave you with two loops that remain. Yarn over and go through the first loop and then yarn over and go through the second loop. And that is a double crochet herringbone. Like I said, it's just a little finicky there trying to go through that first loop, I think. Okay, so we're going to do a double crochet herringbone into the next stitch, but we're only going through the back loop. So we're going to yarn over and go through the back loop of the next stitch and draw up a loop. And then just directly pull that loop through that first loop on your hook like that. There you go. That's the hardest part, I think, right there. Then you yarn over and go through the first loop on your hook and yarn over and go through the next loop on your hook. And that's the double crochet herringbone. Let's do it again, one, two. Okay, we're gonna work the herringbone in the back loop of the next stitch. So we're gonna yarn over and only going into the back loop, draw up a loop, and to immediately go pull that loop through the first loop on your hook. Like that. There you go. Yarn over, go through the first loop on your hook, and then yarn over and go through the remaining loops on your hook, like that. And then we're gonna do it again. Yarn over, and we're gonna go through the back loop only of the next stitch, and draw up a loop, and directly pull it through the first loop on your hook, like that. 
yarn over and go through the next loop on your hook and yarn over and we'll go through the remaining loops on your hook and again I'll show you again yarn over we're only working in the back loop remember so back loop of the next stitch draw up a loop and immediately pull it through that first loop on your hook and then you yarn over go through the next loop and yarn over and go through the remaining loops just like that so that's kind of that's how you work the herringbone double crochet herringbone now I'm gonna do that in every stitch around now remember I'm only working in the back loop on this round of every stitch so again I'm gonna yarn over and I'm only going in the back loop of the next stitch draw up the loop and directly pull it through the first loop on your hook and then you yarn over and go through one loop and yarn over and go through the remaining loops like that again yarn over go through the back loop only of the next stitch draw up a loop and then directly pull it through the first loop on your hook yarn over and go through the first loop on your hook and yarn over and go through the next loops on your hook just like that so i'm going to continue that pattern all the way around until we get back to our starting point remember we're only working in that back loop only this first time around okay so i have made it to the end of round 12 which was our first round of herringbone double crochet herringbone stitches so i'm going to go ahead and end uh by slip stitching into my first herringbone stitch now we're going to go through both loops now so we're not going to be working in the back loop only anymore so we're just going to go ahead and slip stitch through both loops of our first double crochet herringbone just like that now in order to get the uh, traditional herringbone pattern we would need to work in back and forth uh motions so therefore since we're working in the round we're going to have to turn our work so what we're going to do is chain one and turn our work and this will give us the back and forth look that the traditional herringbone has while working in the round still so again that chain one does not count as anything okay we we just pretend like it's not even there so we're going to go ahead and work a double crochet herringbone into the first stitch here that we just slip stitched into um, so remember we're we're going through both loops now no more going through the back loop only we're going through both loops so we're going to yarn over and go into that stitch draw up a loop and do our herringbone so we go directly through that first loop there it's always the first it's always the hardest one the first herringbone of the first row there we go <laughs> and then yarn over go through the first loop and yarn over go through the remaining loops now we're going to do a double crochet herringbone in every stitch oh just but just remember we're going through both loops now okay go into the next stitch go through that first loop on your hook and then we yarn over go through the next one and then the remaining again yarn over go through both loops of the next stitch pull through that first loop it's always the hardest part <laughs> yarn over go to the first stitch of the first loop and then the remaining loops so we're doing a double this the double crochet herringbone and both uh, through both loops of every stitch all the way around and remember we're working on the back side of our work now since we turned our work So I'm going to continue to putting one double crochet herringbone stitch in every stitch all the way around. This is round 13 that we're on. Okay, and I'll meet back up with you at the beginning. All right, I have made it to the end of round 13 and I have 72 stitches. So I'm going to go ahead and end by slip stitching into my first double crochet herringbone stitch. And I am going to chain one and turn my work back around to face the front. Now I'm going to do repeat again, doing one double crochet herringbone in every stitch. 
So this will be around a 14 that we're working on. So we chain one, remember that doesn't count as anything. And we're gonna work a double crochet herringbone right back there into that first stitch. It's always the hardest one I think to do, for me anyways. There we go. <laughs> and then we work. Remember, we're going through both loops to get still. One double crochet herringbone in every stitch all the way around until we get back to our starting point. Bones are a little tricky. Okay, I'll meet back up with you at the end of the row. Okay, so I'm coming to the end of round 14, and we still should have 72 stitches. If your hat is looking a little funny, like the herringbone stitches are sticking out wider than the um ribbing it's cool <laughs> it's cool it's supposed to be like that we'll take care of that in a little bit whenever we add more ribbing at the bottom and that will straighten that right up and it'll be like it never happened <laughs> okay all right so i have 72 stitches here at the end of round 14 like i always have and i'm gonna go ahead and end by slip stitching into the top of my first double crochet herringbone and then I'm going to chain one and turn my work and I'm going to do another round of herringbone stitches. Working on the back side now, going through both loops still. And so this is round 15 that we're on right now. So we're going to do a herringbone right there, double crochet herringbone into that first stitch. First one's always the hardest one. For me anyways. There we go. And now I'm going to work one double crochet herringbone in every stitch all the way around. Remember, we're on the back side of our work now. Round 15. So I'm going to continue around and I'll meet back up with you when I make it back to my starting point. I made it to the end of round 15 and I went ahead and slip stitched um, and ended the round into my first um, double crochet herringbone and 72 stitches still so I'm gonna chain one and turn my work now I'm not gonna do any more herringbone stitches okay so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do single crochet in every stitch so I'm gonna go right back in here into this first stitch here remember that chain one doesn't count as anything okay we'll just pretend like it's not there and single crochet and now i'm going to work around putting one single crochet on top of every double crochet herringbone stitch until i make it back around to my starting point we're on the front side of our work now and we will remain on the front side so no more turning our work so one single crochet in every stitch all the way around and I'll meet back up with you at our starting point. You're on round 16 now. All right, I've made it to the end of round 16, my single crochet row, and I'm gonna go ahead and end by slip stitching into my first single crochet. 72 stitches. Now we're gonna start our ribbing again. What we did up here, down here. So I'm going to chain three and I'm going to do a front post double crochet around the next stitch, which is actually the post of the single crochet. So go around the post of the single crochet like that and do a front post double crochet. And then I'm going to do a back post double crochet around the post of the next single crochet so just go around it from behind like that and work a back post and then a front post single crochet around the post of the next 
back or front post double crochet I'm sorry double crochet around the post of the next single crochet if I said front post single or back post single I apologize we're working front post doubles in back post double crochets now again back post double crochet around the next single crochet around the post of it and front post double crochet around the post of the next single crochet and we're going to repeat this all the way around we're just doing a front post double crochet back post double crochets but we're just working it around the post of the single crochet from the previous row So I'm going to continue this all the way around until I make it back to my starting point. All right, so I've made it to the end of round 17 and I have my 72 stitches and I'm going to, you should have ended in a front post double crochet and I'm going to slip stitch into the top of my beginning chain three. Now I'm going to repeat round 17. The front post double crochet, back post double crochet repeat. Um, until I get my hat a little bit longer. So for round 18, I'm just going to chain three. And I'm going to front post double crochet in the next stitch. And back post double crochet around the next stitch. So we're just doing our ribbing again. Front post double crochet into the next and then back post double crochet around the next this is kind of like what we did at the top front post double crochet and then a back post double crochet front post and back post now I'm going to continue repeating this until I get back around to my starting point front post and back post front post double and back post double all the way around and I'll meet back up with you at the beginning okay so once you get to the end of round 18 should end it in a post stitch or front post double crochet 72 stitches and by slip stitching into your top of your beginning chain three now we're going to repeat round 18 actually for as long as you want the hat okay so i repeated round 18 for a total of 23 rounds and that is starting from round one all the way down i repeated that round 18 until i hit, i finished out round 23 there it is that's as long as i want my hat but i am going to do one finishing row so, if you want yours longer, make it longer. You want it shorter, leave off a row or two. It's up to you. It's your hat. Now, we did take care of that bobbling out there a little bit. It looks a little bit better there. So, round tw 22. Go ahead and end by slip stitching into your beginning chain three. Okay. Now, we're gonna. I'm going to do a finishing row of single crochet. So, we still have our 72 stitches. I'm going to chain one. And that chain one we act like it's not there so we're going to go right back into that same stitch right there on top of that chain three there and single crochet and then we're going to put one single crochet on top of every stitch all the way around and this will be it and then we'll be finished so one single in every stitch until you make it back to your starting point. This is round 23 that I'm on. Remember though, you could have did your shorter or longer. It's completely up to do you. You could do these uh, ribbing or these post stitch rows, rows for as many as you'd like. All right, I've made it to the end. And I'm gonna go ahead and end by slip stitching into my first single crochet. Not that chain one, but the first single crochet. I'm gonna tie this off and I'm going to hide my tail 
and hide any remaining tails that I have. And that will be it. I think that it turned out okay, but I wish now that I would have chose a different yarn. I love this yarn. I think it's gorgeous. It's all my colors that are my favorite, but I think it was a little busy for the type of pattern that I did. So if I make this again, I think I will use a solid color and maybe a different color for the herringbone. But all in all, I think it went well. You know, you can't match knitting exactly the same, <laughs> the same when you're with crochet because they are different. They look different and just, I just did the best I could. So that's it. If you make this, you know, I really, really want to see a picture of it. I would love to see all the color combinations that this can be made into um, as far as crochet wise goes. I mean, like I said, I think it turned out really good. I love the colors, but it's extremely busy. I wish, you know, I think if I make it again, like I said, I'll use solids for the ribbing and maybe a different color across for the herringbone now or solid altogether. I don't know what I'll do, but I'd love to see yours. So don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoyed this. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And when you hit that subscribe button, make sure you hit notifications and make it to where they're all turning on. So you don't miss out on any of my videos, tutorials, yarn content, whatever I do. Now, if you make this, and I would love to see a picture. If you have Instagram, and you can uh, upload a picture to there. Hashtag Bag O'Day Crochet, and I'll see it. You can always send me a picture through email uh, at Bag O'Day Crochet at gmail.com. I'm really interested in seeing all the color combos that you guys come up with because I want to see it in a, in a sol more solid color than this. But I think that it, I, I like it. I'll probably wear it. They, uh, I'll, I'll wear it around. I will. I love these colors. So thanks, everybody, for watching. Have a good day. Bye, guys. Stay safe.